Teresa May Chuck is from California. She was born in Saigon, Vietnam, and immigrated with her mother and brother after the war at age two. And her father remained in Viet Cong in the re-education camp there for nine years. She has been writing poems related to her memories, her experience, ever since she can remember. Teresa said in coming over in, with her language from Vietnam, uh, she often would find ways of using uh, English language to help her learn new vocabulary and often came in kind of sing-song or poetic words and images that contributed to her making of poetry. She always was interested in writing a novel and went on to study philosophy and literature in college. But it was poetry that she went on writing and outreaching with to people all over. She's also worked as high school teacher in South Korea and a middle school teacher. She now works in LA. Her poetry has been published in a number of journals and her first book, Red Thread, uh, was released a few years ago, as well as a chapbook, and she's just about to release her second book, Keeper of the Winds. She's also been included in a number of anthologies she's read throughout the country based on the content, the focus of her poetry, and a recent anthology that she's included in is by Doug Valentine, who is here today, titled With Our Eyes Wide Open. And it's about writers who are united by common interest in promoting peace, justice, and human welfare. Teresa is working on a documentary based on this book. And uh, they did an interview, and the focus on that was on transformation and writing poetry. And Doug had asked, how can poetry help? And Teresa said, war is not the answer. I think what people can do is to work on healing the wounds of past wars and raising awareness of the horrors of war and letting the stories of history be told not only by the victors. With awareness comes compassion. Poetry helps because it can reach into a person's heart and psyche, and these are places where transformation takes place. And she's here with us today to share some of her words of transformation and experience. So please help me welcome Teresa May Chuck. The poems I'm going to read are about my family's experiences through the Vietnam War and also afterwards in processing the war and also about other, other wars. Immigration. It is October when the winds of autumn blow strong in the Pacific. There are over 2,000 of us, sardines, barely human and starving. We sleep on the floor and wash ourselves with seawater. People are sick. When someone dies from sickness, she or he is wrapped in a blanket and tossed overboard during a Buddhist chant. I was only two years old then and cannot recollect the dying next to me, nor can I recollect my constant coughing, nor can I recall seeing my mother's worried countenance as she contemplated our future, how my constant crying made her want to jump overboard. Cockroaches. A proposal by someone to my mom after the Vietnam War. Why don't you sell your baby? You don't have anything to eat. A response by my four-year-old brother. No, don't sell my sister. There are lots of cockroaches for us to eat. When I returned to the country 18 years later, I saw them, large, brown, shiny tanks on the wall, evidence of my brother's love for me. 
The following poem is about my father's experience in re-education camp. <clears throat> Not worth a bullet. A bullet is made of copper or lead. Gunpowder is poured into the case. The firing pin hits the primer at the back of the bullet, which starts the explosion. Altogether, the bullet and the case are typically about two inches in length and weigh a few ounces. My father said that the Viet Congs told him and the other prisoners while in re-education camp that they were not worth a bullet. They would work for the Viet Congs and then die. A bamboo tree is smooth long with roots that hold the earth with the strong grip of green knuckles and fingers. They are used to build houses, fences, etc. A bamboo tree can weigh 60 pounds or more and be 20 feet tall. The prisoners were forced to walk barefoot up the mountains and carry bamboo back to the camp. Due to the weight of the bamboo, they were only able to carry one at a time. Vietnam Ghost Stories. Ghost-like beings roam, carrying the bones of the dead. Their steps heavy with the weight of fields and fields. And the dead, too, Stories mother tells of the ghost with a long tongue that licks dishes at night. So one of the consequences of the war in Vietnam was the use of Agent Orange and its continued effects right now in the country. There are still hot spots of Agent Orange and children are still being born with the effects. This poem is called Agent Orange. It is difficult to be alone without a mother's touch in a crib like a baby, except one is not. A son taught to live with a thirst for a mother who loves her child, though one of his legs is too short, the other too long. He sits, arms bent and limp, but do not avoid him. He wants to interact. His swollen eyes and misshapen head leans back. In a dream, mother holds him close as if by her embrace alone, she will somehow right the wrong. The chemical traveled through her placenta to the womb where small limbs that needed to form couldn't. Where the tiny body, the size of a fist, no longer knew what to do. It was named for the orange band around each 55 gallon drum. Orange as a sunrise that permeates one's soul, how its rays cover the sky and the earth with a deep orange, rising as those bodies also rise. When I first saw Daddy, he was like an Egyptian cat, skinny, foraging, and stern, just released from a Viet Cong prison. He told us he hated the color red. 16 years later, he wears a red sweatshirt and smiles, the pin tip opening in his heart enough to let in a driblet of red.
This poem was written for my paternal grandmother and for my maternal. Grandma, a hologram. In your physical absence, the hologram of me still contains you like a cut leaf. You are part of the light scattered from me so that even a tiny fragment, an eyelash, still contains the whole of you. This poem was written for my son. Photosynthesis. How can I convince you that you do have chlorophyll? That you can take the sun's energy and turn it into sugar? Produce something sweet inside of you? Take the waste people breathe out and make it into something that will keep you alive, that will keep those around you alive. Create oxygen. Why do you say that this metaphor doesn't work, that you don't have the powers of a plant, that nature didn't intend you that way? Look how you twist and turn towards the light. Now I'm going to read from my new book, Keeper of the Winds, which will be released on Monday. <laughs> but um, you can, if you want to order it by tomorrow, it's free shipping. <laughs> so, sorry, <laughs> I probably didn't need to talk about that. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, in addition to the war, war in Vietnam, I continue to write about other wars because this is an issue that's important to me, and peace is important to me, and reconciliation and transformation and bringing awareness into the world in, in the small way that I can. Depleted uranium. The water runs a neon color in the village. All the villagers know why the babies are born dead or deformed. Others say there is no proof it was the war. Sometimes truth can only be understood. The father carries the little body wrapped in a blanket. She will be buried with a wooden grave marker, her name inscribed with a knife. There are coffins that are only six inches long. If you place your hand inside, it will fit. This poem was just published in an anthology called Mojo Anthology, edited by John Roche of Rochester, New York. The gambler. The metal rod she holds is her wand. The deck is more than 52 cards. Her suits, bombs used on both sides of the war. M14, dap loi, min moi. She walks in the wild fields seeking the invisible, bringing it to the surface in a strange beauty of smoke and explosion. The wager is her life or a limb. The shovel, a tongue that lifts the crumbling earth to reach an unexploded landmine. She spreads out the dirt beneath her hands like cards. And there is a continued problem with unexploded landmines in Vietnam, especially central Vietnam, and in Cambodia and Laos. And kids are still being killed, and um, adults as well, due to these unexploded landmines. 
I took nothing and broke it in half. As if mocking me, there was an even greater nothing, and I felt myself falling. I took my falling and broke it in half. It did not stop the falling. I plunged deeper. I took this depth and gathered it, the darkness with all of its stars, and put it in the wings of a bat. I watched it retreat into the deepest of caves, where it screams and listens to its voice returning from stone walls. Penso, this is a quote by Vincent van Gogh. In spite of everything, I shall rise again. I will take up my penso, which I have forsaken in my great discouragement, and I will go on with my drawing. A missile is shaped like a pencil. Its long, slender body and pointed end creates history. A girl walking down the streets a few steps ahead of her sister and friend, two medics who were trying to help injured people, the parked ambulance, all were annihilated by the same weapon. Above, drones, silent, unmanned planes, a metal predatory bird that shoots a missile with precision, identifying the colors of a shirt, the features on a face, the shape of a nose, the color and length of a mustache. In a room far away, in another country, a man sits at a desk and looks at a screen. He strokes his thick, dark mustache as he carefully contemplates, then pushes a button. There is a charred hole in the ground where the girl once stood. There are pencils that write and erase, write and erase, so that there is nothing to be read on the page. The page blank as the desert sky, blank as the smooth shell of a drone. There is a family drinking mint tea in the living room. The man holds a cup to his lips. The glass touches his mustache. A silent bird hovers above. In a split second, everyone is dead. The house is in rubbles. Arms, legs, splattered organs among broken concrete. Soon, there will be no trace. Ocean in a conch shell. Ocean in a conch shell, F-16 fighter jet above in an empty cup pressed against the ear. <coughs> the road. I say my children are like lightning bugs. I see how they glow in the dark. Sometimes it is the only light I see. Accents. Today, I decided to write with brush and ink my name in Vietnamese, Chuk Mai Tue the one on my birth certificate with all of its beautiful accents, lightning above the U, ocean wave above the Y, mountaintop above, and reflection of moon below the E. Today, I made four small marks and took back my native language. And I'll end with my poem, Names. 
I'm tired of having five different names, having to change them when I enter a new country or take on a new life. My first name is my truest, I suppose, but I never use it, and nobody calls me by this Vietnamese name, though it is on my birth certificate. Duê Mai Juk. It makes the sound of a twang of a string pulled. My parents tell me my name in Cantonese is Juk Mei Wai. Three soft bird chirps, and they call me a Wai. Shortly after I moved to the U.S., I became Teresa Mai Chuck, then Teresa May Chuck. Teresa is the sound water makes when one is washing one's hands. After my first marriage, my name was Teresa Chuck Prokopiev. After my second marriage, my name was Teresa Chuck Dowell. Now I'm back to Teresa May Chuck, but I want to go way back, reclaim that name once given and lost so quickly in its attempt to become someone that would fit in. Who is Dwe Mai Chuk? I don't really know. I was never really her and her birthday on March 16. I never celebrate because it's not my real birthday, though it is on my birth certificate. My birthday is on January 26, really, but I have to pretend that it's on March 16 because my mother was late registering me after the war. Or it's in December, the date changing every year according to the lunar calendar. This is the one my parents celebrate because it's my Chinese birthday. All these names and birthdays make me dizzy. Sometimes I don't feel like a Teresa anymore. Dwe isn't so embarrassing. A fruit learns to love its juice. Anyways, I'd like to be string, resonating, pulled back tensely like a bow, then reverberate in the arrow's release straight for the heart. Thank you, thank you. Kama, the briefest pause for breath or for meaning, understood only by those two tousled heads on the sofa linking minds, they have, for half a moment, gone silent. Kama, my smallest self, a sliver and swaddling, learning my smile from yours, toes unfurled like syntax to your eyes. Kama, strings us along from one meeting to the next. It's steering away from you, comma, the main point, <clears throat> or the time I spent looking over my shoulder. It is this knowledge, comma, what's next, trapping you there in my shifting heart. Thank you.
my friend We both wanna be happy Hey, my friend We both been hard before We're the same So much more than different If you had courage to show Peach and pear.